Angelic visitation and the mystery of tithing. They came with the members of the local police and official security services. I saw two girls holding flowers and reciting a poem to welcome me. Many members of the church came to receive me. People in the airport thought that I was an official authority. I was then taken to the hotel. There were also members of the local police. I was surprised by this level of hospitality. I spent one month testifying about the Lord and angelic manifestation in that church. After one month of speaking in that church, I began to lose my voice. The pastor suggested that I should return to the capital for rest. But before going back, the pastor said to me, we must bless you. How can we bless you? Are you married? I said, I am engaged and I am getting married in two weeks time. The pastor said, we will be the main contributor to your marriage expenses. We will take care of all the spending. These people bought a return ticket so that I can come back after my wedding. While I was back in the capital, the pastor and the people of his church kept calling in order to bless me financially. Two weeks later I returned in order to continue my testimony. I was in the hotel with the pastor relating to him about angelic visitations, when suddenly we felt a wind blowing in the hotel room where I was lodged. Suddenly I saw the wall of the hotel room moving. Immediately an angel of the Lord came through the wall of the room. The pastor could not see him. Immediately the angel of the Lord began to explain to me the mystery of blessing. Afterward, he disappeared but later in the day when I was testifying in the church, suddenly I saw an angel of the Lord landing and entering the church. He was moving around in the church while I was testifying. This angel was flying in the church while I was testifying. As the angel continued to move to the church, my attention went to him. Although I continued to testify, some people began to notice that I was distracted by something. The pastor was uncomfortable because he noticed that I lacked concentration. I kept observing the angel of the Lord. However, I noticed that the angel was not allowing me to see his face. Minutes later he descended in a lower altitude and he leaned toward the people. It was then that I managed to see his face and I was able to recognize him. He was actually the angel of my church. I saw this angel in the past and I conversed with him by the permission of the Lord who was present. In every living church on the earth, the Lord has assigned a specific angel. When I watched this angel, there was eye contact between him and me. This category of this angel is called, faithful. They are the keepers of the churches. When I saw him in this church, I wondered. I said that this is the angel of my church. What is he doing here in this church in this province? Then I saw this angel hovering above the church and then he spread his arms. I was observing every move he was making. Suddenly I observed a very intense light that began to shine and to flow from his bosom. This intense light and its rays that were flowing and emanating from his bosom began to disperse and fill the whole church. Every member of this church was illuminated by rays of light from this angel. This was happening while I was delivering my testimony in the church. When I finished testifying, the angel of the Lord disappeared. The following day I was in the hotel when the pastor came to see me. He said, Man of God, you were not focused throughout the whole testimony. I began to relate to the pastor what I saw during the delivery of my message. And while we were talking, we began to feel a wind blowing in the hotel room. Suddenly I saw the angel of the Lord entering the hotel room where we were. He told me, yesterday I hid my face. It is me. My name is Faithful. I was about to ask him about what happened yesterday in the service. Immediately he answered my thought. The angel of the Lord said, I am the keeper of your church. That is why you are wondering why I am here. I am here because of the hospitality and the way they were taking care of you. Your church in the capital has never done that to you. As you know we are sent to churches all over the world to keep them and to bless them. Therefore I was ordered by the one who lives forever to transfer the blessings of your members to this church because of the treatment and hospitality rendered to you. They have appropriated the blessings of your church because of the manner they have treated you. That is why you saw me releasing blessings on them. While I was talking to this angel, the pastor was observing me talking to an empty space. Then the angel said to me, Every time people ask God for money or material things, you must understand that when God answers your prayers, these blessings come to us the angels of the churches. We are the managers of the blessings of the churches. We are called, faithful, and we release the blessings only to the believers that are faithful. We are faithful. Understand that this is about principle because we are called faithful, we only bless those who are faithful to God. The angel said, if you are not faithful to what belongs to God, we will not be faithful to you. 
understand that the man of God belongs to God himself. When he delivers the word to the church, the church must be faithful in terms of their obligations to him. It is only when the people are faithful to the man of God that is feeding them the word that we the angels of the churches become faithful to these people. It is in that moment that we release the blessings. People of God must learn to honor and fulfill their obligations toward the man who has released the anointing and the word from God to them. That's when we are called to act in terms of blessings. The angel said, I have been keeping so many blessings in my hands but considering that you are not blessed and valued by your own congregation, I kept these blessings. And because of the hospitality you received here, I had to release these blessings in this church because they have treated you accordingly. The people in your church have impoverished themselves. Then the angel disappeared. When I was about to leave this province, I was offered the official protocol service and security to accompany me to the airport. There was a lot of honor. I was treated like a special guest of honor. I was sad about my church so I decided to have an open conversation with everybody in the church. The people kept asking me what to do. It was in 2018 February that something happened. I was holding a tithing service and I was in front of the people in order to bless them. I was about to lay my hand on 15 people that stood up for tithing. Suddenly I saw God's angels landing in the church. They formed two lines, on my left and on my right. I observed them for some time. Then I began to lay hand on the people who came forward for tithing. However, when I laid my hand on the first person who came to give his tithe when that man went back to his seat I saw one of the seraphim detaching from the line and following him to his seat and he stood by his side. When I laid my hand on the second person, the moment he turned around to go back to his seat, a second angel followed him to his seat and he stood by his side. Every time I laid my hand on a person he was accompanied and followed by the angel of the Lord. Considering that I prayed for fifteen people who came to give tithes, the fifteen angels accompanied them and remained with them by their side in the church. Then other remaining angels went away. If only everybody was faithful on that day, all the angels would have remained and stayed in their lives. When I finished the service, I explained to the church what I saw but I could not understand the meaning of this. The following day I was supposed to go back to the church in order to pray and inquire about all this. It was a few days later that the angels came in order to provide me an explanation of the mystery of the tithes. It was 5 a.m. when everybody was sleeping. I went to the living room in order to pray. I was praying when suddenly I began to feel the way I felt when God transported me in the Spirit. I felt a powerful anointing. I said to myself that this must be an encounter. In the twinkling of an eye, I found myself in the church. At that moment I saw the angels that showed up previously in the church. When they appeared, they made a line precisely the same way they did the last time when I was praying for the people who were giving their tithes. Suddenly I saw one of these angels deploying his wings. After deploying his wings, he lifted his feet and he took a position of flight as if he wanted to fly away in space. I noticed that this seraph looked like one of the four living creatures that stand before the throne of the Lord that has the appearance of an eagle that I saw previously. This angel seems like he wanted to fly away yet he was not taking his flight. He said to me, we are here for the appointment. I said to the angel, the appointment is scheduled for 8 a.m., how come you came at this time? The angel replied, We do not operate in the factor called time. We operate beyond time. Humans operate in time but we operate on appointments. Considering that this is an appointment, this day is marked for dispensation. When the day of the appointment comes, although it is early, we are already here to honor the appointment. It is because you are waiting for the time that we were waiting for you. When this angel finished saying these words, in the twinkling of an eye I found myself back in the living room of my house. I was in wonder. Later when it was almost 8 in the morning, I went to church because the appointment with the angel was 8. The angelic appearance in the morning at 5 was an indication that the angel was already on the earth for this appointment. Later on, I was joined by the evangelist who was supposed to be the witness and participant of this encounter as usual. When the angels of the Lord landed at 8 a.m., they said to the evangelist, We are impatient. We have been looking forward to this appointment. Because God's children have given the tithes and are giving the tithes but the Lord never revealed to humanity the mystery behind the tithe. So we are keen to reveal this mystery to humanity now. The angel that was talking to us was the angel that took the position of flight. My assumption is that he was in that position because our understanding was to rise in terms of giving. The seraphim said to us, Generation after generation has passed, God's people have not known the impact and truth about the tithes. 
By the instruction of the one who lives forever, I am here to explain to humanity the mystery of the tithe. The workers of the devil have fought against these proceeding yet this is invested by God for angels that are his creation that is ordained to reside in your house. The angel said, Your father Abraham has two affiliations with you, a spiritual affiliation and a physical affiliation. God in heaven has linked you to your father Abraham in the spiritual level but you needed a material affiliation to your father Abraham. We have come to reveal the principle that will link you physically to Abraham's blessing. You are heirs with Abraham and you have the faith of Abraham. But you need to connect to Abraham's material blessings although, in the spirit level, you are heirs with him. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Gal 3, 9. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. Gal 3, 29. The angel said to me, Be careful, a house become a habitation of angels. Have you not read the Lord's Prayer when he said, let your will be done on earth like it is in heaven. You have not grasped the meaning of the Lord's Prayer. You have been in heaven and you know nothing about it. The Lord's Prayer means that the engineer of heaven must come down to earth in order to configure your house in the image of heaven so that it will become a habitation of angels. We are the engineers. We are the ones who come down in your house in order to configure it in the image of heaven in order to bring you things that exceed your understanding and imagination. Your house must be configured so that it would become a habitation of angels. The angel said, Moreover, when the Lord ate in the house of Zacchaeus, Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man, too, is a son of Abraham. Luke 19, 9 He said these words after having eaten a material food from his house, which has created a link with Abraham's material blessings. The angel said, when the Almighty ate material food in the house of Abraham, he had to bless Abraham materially. That is why when he finished eating, he asked, Where is Sarah? Gen 18, 9 And they said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. Be careful with your pastors. When they eat in your place, when they drink in your place, when they get material things from you, this brings about material blessings so that deep may call upon deep peace 42. 7. Flow may call flow. The promise of Isaac was a result of the fact that God ate material food in Abraham's house. Abraham had to receive material blessings from God. But because of incompatibility many of you are not blessed. You gonna sow material in order to receive material. These were the words of the seraphim. He continued his discourse and said, Now this is the prerequisite for your home to be configured in the image of heaven so that it would become a residence of angels. Firstly, you have to understand that we seraphim were created with the intention of praise. So when we come to your house through the tithe, in order to make it our residence, we impart to you the anointing of praise. We impart to you the anointing of praise so that you can become commendable and honorable being. In fact, when we come to your house through tithe, in order to make it our residence, we look around in order to identify and locate things in various aspects of your life that render you shameful and dishonored. We identify aspects of your life where there is a shame and where there is humiliation. The case of Sarah's sterility was a humiliation and shame in Abraham's house. That is why after eating at Abraham's house, the Almighty asked for Sarah. The angel said the house that pays tithes deserves to be honored. All the descendants of Abraham are supposed to be blessed because Abraham has paid tithes for them in advance. That is why the Lord said, This daughter of Abraham deserves to be free. The seraphim said, you have to understand that one tithe is equal to one angel in your life. Lack of tithes means lack of angels in your house. The angel said, We come to the house and the lives of people who pay tithes. Every time a man pays a tithe, one of us come in his life and will be in his life until his death. If you pay tithe monthly you will be getting one angel every month. It is this way that your house will become the residence of angels. Sometimes a believer encounters an accident and danger and people wonder but this is a result of lack of angels because one tithe is equal to one angel. Those who refuse to pay tithes will lack angels and defenders, as it is written, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. Mal 3:10-11. The seraphim said, The moment you pay tithe, you are assigned an angel who fights the devourer for your sake. Your enemy who is our enemy is fighting the tithe because he wants your house to be oppressed by demons. He wants the absence of angels in your house. The angel of the Lord said to my evangelist who was a witness, O witness, pray so that the instrument will be transported to different houses. 
Pray that the instrument may see how houses that failed to pay the tithes become oppressed by demons. At that moment, the evangelist prayed. When the evangelist had finished praying, one of the seraphim said to the evangelist, Look, we are already in the first house and the instrument is witnessing its reality. Actually, when the evangelist was praying, I felt a powerful anointing and I became light. And then I found myself flying with a seraph. Later we landed in a house in the city. I realized it was my own house. The wings of this seraphim were deployed but his feet were not touching the ground. However, my feet touched the ground of my living room. Immediately I noticed that in the four corners of my house, there were red ribbon-shaped fabrics. I noticed that these red ribbon-shaped fabrics were extended beyond the house to the infinite. I could not see where they were heading. My house had these red ribbon fabrics all over the place that went beyond the house to unknown destinations. While I was in wonder, the angel of the Lord said to me, You are stunned by these reddish ribbon-shaped fabrics and you are wondering where they are going. Understand that each ribbon-shaped fabric is a bondage, a tie. Although you are a pastor, you had ties and bondages in many aspects of your life. But every time you give a tithe, you are given an angel whose task is to break one of these ties and bondage. Deliverance means actions of many angels that you receive through the tithe that you are giving. You have noticed these ribbon-shaped fabrics are red. It's because these are blood ties and bondages. One of these red ribbon-shaped fabrics is a behavior tie, another is a tribal tie. You are wondering where these ribbon-shaped fabrics are heading. Don't worry, I will show you. The angel of the Lord said, What makes your houses oppressed by demons are your origin, your ancestors and your past. The objective of the devil is that your ancestors may follow you. The angel of the Lord told me, In the past, your ancestors have signed pacts and covenants with the God of the forest. Therefore one of this ribbon-shaped fabric you see here is a bondage, a tie that is heading to the forest. There is the archive that the enemy is using in order to bind you. He is using it so that the progeny may pay the price. These are contracts. Your ancestors wanted power so they went to invoke the God of Thunder. As a result, their progeny and descendants to which you belong have been held captive by the God of Thunder. Your ancestors were doing rituals and ceremonies that were attracting demons. And these demons must emerge in the physical world through the birth of their descendants. Every time a child is born in your family, the demon that was summoned by the ancestors in the past will incarnate the body of the child that is born in the world. The demon came again through the birth of the child. These are demons of the past who are coming to the present, thanks to your ancestors' contracts. Every time you celebrate a birthday of one of the children in the family, you are commemorating a demon that has incarnated in that child. And when the whole members of the family are possessed by the demons of your tribe, some of the demons of your clan and tribe will lack a body to dwell in. As a result, they will dwell in the wall of your houses that will become oppressed by a demon. However, when you pay a tithe one of us seraphim will come to dwell in your place and he will cut the ancestral and demonic ties in your home. It could be a tie of behavior that goes back to your ancestors. Some of your deliverance require virtues, not prayer. The angel said, It is written, Make effort to add to your faith virtue. 2 Peter 1, 5. Virtue is beyond faith. Deliverance is also caused by virtue. While I was out of my body conversing with the angel, the angels that were left with the evangelist said to him, The devil makes sure that your family and your house are assemblies of oppression, so that the husband would come with the ties of his family, the wife would come with the ties of her family and the children would be recipients of ties from both families. But thanks to your tithes, we come to remove these ribbon-shaped fabrics that are the ties of your family, clan, and tribe. Every time you give a tithe, you will get an angel who will remove one of these ties. However, many of the anniversary celebrations commemorate the spirits of your ancestors that are born and incarnated in the children of your family. The angel said, Your terrestrial religion has ill-defined deliverance. Understand that Abraham has paid tithes and the woman that was bound was liberated by the Lord because of that tithe. Every time you give tithes, you are creating a virtue. Satan has bound this woman, a daughter of Abraham, for 18 years, shouldn't she be untied from this bondage on the Sabbath day? Luke 13 16. According to this angel, the tithe that we give create a virtue that is a force that delivers us and pays our debt that was caused by the ancestral covenant. The tithe that you pay will buy out the debt that you have with the devil due to the contract and covenant of your ancestors. The ancient gods have given your ancestors knowledge, divination and revelation. In return, these gods have acquired the right to live in the bodies of their progeny but your tithes will buy you out from those covenants.
Immediately I asked the angel of the Lord, What are the gods that are battling my house and family? The seraphim said to me, Come. Suddenly we took a speedy flight to my native province of my ancestors. When we landed, I noticed that there were waters everywhere. The angel said, Your ancestors in your province have entered a covenant with the water gods in order to have beauty. Immediately I realized why the people of my tribe were beautiful. We are always proud of our physical beauty but we could not know that our beauty came from the water world of sirens. He said, These are the bondage of your family and your tribe. The angel said, When you pay tithes, these are the battle that we fight for you. You can never imagine the kind of battle we engage when you pay tithes. The angel said, You can pay tithes on all occasions, wherever you want it, it has nothing to do with your salary. You can take any money you have and pay tithe. When Abraham paid tithes, it was not from a salary. While I was talking to the angel, the angels that were left with the evangelist said to him, Witness, do you know why the Bible says a man will leave his father and mother and will cleave to his wife and they will become one flesh? Gen 2 24, EPH 531. Man and woman must detach from their families, their tribes, their clans and unite in order to form a new generation that is beyond family ties and bondage. The angel said, you can pay marriage tithes. Marriage tithes enable a couple to detach from family ties and bondage in order to form a new generation. Most of the time the devil worked in family blood ties. Marriage tithes enable man and woman to give birth to children that will not have ties to family bondage. They will be out of family and tribal ties. Then the angel took me to Indonesia in a house where everything was old. There was poverty everywhere. The house was old, the painting was old, the saucepan was old. I saw a man who was like suffering from malnutrition. Then I saw this man going to consult a mystic. He said, I have come to consult you because there is a crisis in my family. Immediately the mystic came up with a crystal ball and began to do the invocation. The angel said, every time when people come to a mystic who consult the crystal ball, they are accusing themselves. The crystal ball is round and transparent. It is round because it represents the matrix. It represents the world. As far as the devil is concerned, any man that is born in the matrix is bound. The crystal ball is a vicious circle. Understand why your father said he is the way, the truth and the life John 14, 6. He is the way because many are bound in the system and they did not know the way out. That is why he said he is the way. He is the truth in order to tell you that the devil is lying and he is the life in order to give you a new beginning. The mystic will inform the dark world that a man that is in the matrix is trying to leave the matrix. He is actually accusing you because you want to go out of the clan and in order to come out of the clan, you need to pay your tithes. We understand you were ignorant of these things that are beyond your understanding, which is beyond your clan and your tribe. Then the angel of the Lord told me that we have to go back. In that very moment, the angels that were in the church told the evangelist, witness, pray so that we can liberate the instrument and so that we can go back to houses that are our residences for the work that you now know. When the evangelist prayed, I returned to my body. Immediately I saw angels leaving and each taking his direction without saying a word. This was the end of this encounter. Peace, joy, and love of the Holy Spirit be with your spirit. Angelic visitation and the mystery of...